Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a very quick and dirty horizontal navigation bar. Now this is aimed at those of you who have some knowledge of HTML, CSS. Uh, in all likelihood you just want a navigation bar as part of your web page or your PHP project or something like that. So I'm going to show you how to cre create this in a couple minutes. Absolute minimum here, which is probably what you're looking for. So, I'm going to head over to Notepad++, which is my weapon of choice. I'm not even going to write valid HTML here, which you'll realize uh, very shortly. So I'm going to write the HTML first. A nav bar is just an unordered list, which I'm going to open and close immediately. A list is comprised of list items. Open and close. Um, this is a strange structure, but the list items actually contain links. I open and close every tag as I do it. Uh, an anchor tag is worthless without an href. And since I don't know where this is going to go, I'm just going to go with a pound sign or a dummy link. And every anchor tag needs some text, such as this. Right? It's easy to make mistakes because you got a list with list items and an anchor and some content. I'm going to use my friend Control D here, which is like a copy and paste in Notepad++. I've got a couple pages now. I'm just going to change the text. In reality, I would change the links as well, but since they won't go anywhere in the first place, there's no real point to that. So this is an unordered list full of list items, full of anchors, with some content. Now, really, what we're going to need to do, it's, not, it's kind of optional, but we should do this, is I should also wrap this in a nav tag. Now, there's pretty high likelihood that some of you have never seen a nav tag before. I'm also going to indent. Nav tag is HTML5 semantic tag. It's pretty much the same thing as just having a div ID equals nav, if that means anything to you. It's really just separating this piece of our page. All right, that's the HTML portion. Now for the CSS, which is also the harder part. So I'm going to work with um, an embedded style here. So I'm going to open a style tag, close a style tag. I know I'm going fast, but I figure if you're watching this video, that's probably what you're looking for. Uh, the first thing I like to do is just style the nav tag itself. This is a block tag, so really I'm just going to put a whole, uh, just a big stripe across the top. And the best way to do that is just by giving it a background color of black. I'm not even going to use hex values here because I'm trying to do this quick and dirty. Uh, it also really needs a height. You could do this other ways, but... I kind of like giving it a height. Uh, it makes things easier to, easier to control. That's all I need to do for the nav tag. Uh, it's worth saving and running at this point. And you see I get this mess. And you can see what that big black uh, stripe is for. My, my nav bar is going to be inside of that. The next thing I want to style is the list items themselves. Well, I will write this selector, like, if I wanted to center my nav bar, I would center it right here, but I'm not even going to do that here. So I'm just going to create a selector for it, and if we have time, I'll get to it. So if I want to style the list items, I really want to style the list items, which are inside of the list, which are inside of a nav bar. Now, in this example, I don't have to write the selector like that, but this is different from writing just li. Like, if I wrote it like this, then I'd be styling all list items. And if you had another list on your page, you don't want all of your lists looking like a nav bar. So hopefully that makes sense. There's other ways to do this as well. So there's a few things your list items need. One of those things is we want to get rid of the uh, bullets in our list. And so that is li list style type and that is none, right? That kills our bullets. The next thing that needs to happen is we need to give them a width. Now this width needs to be wide enough to hold the text, whatever that means, right? It's completely dependent on how you want things to look. And at this point, I will show you what it looks like because one of the trickier steps is next. Uh, yeah, you really can't see anything here because it's all just stacked up like that. Well, basically what we want our uh, list items to go from left to right instead of from top to bottom. And there's a lot of ways you can do that. I'm just going to float them to the left, which means I'm going to stack them side by side uh, with their left edges. And you can see that right here. It doesn't look good, but it's not supposed to look good at this point. Uh, that's pretty much what you're going to do with the list items. The next thing you want to style are the links. 
So every link which is inside of a list item, which is inside of a list, like that, right? So that's every anchor inside of a list item, inside of a list, inside of a nav tag. Now in reality, I don't know why you would ever have uh, anchors inside of a list item that weren't inside of a nav and a UL, so I'm just gonna delete that. Whether I have that or I don't, not really important. But I think I can get away with this. Should work. I mean, it's possible it cause problems, but not likely. All right, so here is where we kill the underlines. And so that is text decoration none and we also want the font to not be that generic blue color so that's just going to be color and we'll go with white all right we'll look at what this looks like it's pretty close actually at this point you're like uh, it's aligned with the top that doesn't look so good so what you want to do is you want to set the line height which is i just cannot spell this today uh and you want to set the line height to whatever you set it up here this is going to center it within that black area Kind of a, right? I mean, that's not essentials, but but I did it. Uh, one big tricky thing at this point, notice that, like, there's these dead zones up here, which is definitely not good. Like, where does one thing begin? Where does one end? Well, let's kind of address that. One of the things we have to do here is display block. If you do that on your links, that makes the entire region clickable. So this whole region is now page. I definitely spelled something wrong, right? Because that didn't work. And sure enough, if you misspell something in CSS, it's just like it wasn't there at all. All right, and now these whole areas are our links, which is good, but you're like, whoa, where is page one and where's page two? Well, there's two ways to address that. One would be to put a border on the list items themselves. So like border uh, right, and I go one pixel solid, uh, let's go gray. This will kind of help, but I'm saying this probably isn't what you want to do. Maybe it is. At this point, you realize, like, oh, that text should probably be centered. Okay. Again, not necessary, but I'll do it. That's at the list item level. I'll say uh, text align center. That's going to center up my text. Right now, from this point, whether it's bold or scripty or whatever, I'm not really trying to talk about that at this point but I think that's kind of what you're going for. I'm gonna say the best way to do a nav bar, I think there's generally an expectation that you are going to define the hover pseudo class. All right, so when you hover over it, I'm gonna change them colors. So I'll say the background color will become yellow and the color of the text will become green. And you'll see how this really helps. So when I hover over those links, it's going to be very apparent. Like, where does one begin? Where does one end? Well, that problem is already, it's fixed, right? I don't no longer need to worry about that. And at this point, maybe I'm thinking, oh, these borders aren't so awesome anymore. I don't know, maybe they are. Usually I do put borders on my things, but you don't have to. Uh, just so some general, just outstanding issues, which I don't really want to cover because you're at this point, probably that's all you needed, right, if you're watching this video. Notice there's a little gap over there. There's these just kind of crazy gaps just everywhere. Well, when you're working with nav bars, you've got all these default paddings and margins, which you do need to deal with, possibly. So writing a reset rule is a good idea. And what that means, reset rule, is just set the padding and the margin of everything, which is what the star represents, to zero. And if I do that and reload my page. See now it's really up there in the corner and there's really no spaces on the side. When you've got all these nested elements, those, you know, a pixel here, a pixel there begins to add up over time. And since this video has already gone longer than I was hoping it would go, let's talk about centering this. I mean, is it important that you center this nav bar? Not really, I don't think this is unreasonable. What if you had five or six pages, it'd probably run to about over here, which would be totally fine. Uh, if you want to center this, you gotta do a little math. I've got three things. Each one of those is 150 wide. So if I do a little multiplication, I know that they're roughly about 450 pixels wide. Particularly with this reset rule, that's probably pretty close to accurate. Um, and here's the deal. If you look at my page, like this black part, remember that is the nav tag itself. So the list is sitting in that tag. Um, if I put a border around my list like this, Let's go one pixel solid red. You will see what's going on. See my list, uh, yeah, it's got problems, but it, uh, 
it spans the entire width. And the reason it looks all smashed like that is because it doesn't really have a uh, well, there's a there's there's a gross way to fix that, which is overflow hidden, and there's a better way, which is give it a give it a min height or something along those lines. I cannot spell height today, um, and so if you give it a height which is equal to its container, it's going to look just fine. That wasn't really a problem in the first place, as you can kind of see. But anyways, you can't center something which takes up the entire space. So you've got to give it a width, and you need to give it a width which is wide enough to hold your elements. In this case, 450 pixels seems like it would make sense. Uh, let's see if it does, in fact, fit them. Sometimes a browser will add a bit of padding, and it won't work out the way you want. There's no harm in overshooting it by a couple pixels. Once you've got you see I've resized my list. Once I have resized my list, now I can center it. And you center something by saying margin zero auto, which means no margin on the top and the bottom automatically fit the left and the right margins. And if you think about it, if you automatically fit the left and the right, it ends up being centered. And at this point, you're probably thinking those borders look terrible, in which case I would agree and I would Oh, I didn't, didn't mean to delete whatever I did, but I meant to delete that. At this point, I save, and I'm all centered up. Now, that process of centering was unnecessary. You could have stopped watching this video a couple minutes ago. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, like, that's not valid HTML. That's not going to pass a validator. That doesn't feel right. Uh, well, you're correct, but just for example's sake, really, this is valid if I put it into some valid HTML. So I've got this boilerplate over here. This will pass validation. Notice there's nothing more than the minimum here. Basically, I would just take this, the HTML portion, cut that, or actually copy probably would have been more appropriate, but I will cut it, stick it in the body. Um, this style sheet is just going to go somewhere up in the head. Uh, say below the title or so and voila right I've now got valid HTML trust me that should work I'm not even gonna validate it because I'm that confident uh, so that's quick and dirty H uh, horizontal navbar so that should be valid HTML and CSS that's for me thinning it down about as much as I can of course the optional parts were the right we didn't have to deal with the heights but I know from experience that I probably do want to deal with that. We didn't need to center things, um, but uh, I'd say the hover, that's pretty mandatory. Um, so I don't do a lot of HTML and CSS videos, but this is something I get a lot of questions about, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.